Good morning everyone and good morning to you Dr. Ramos. Today I'm going to discuss about the poem entitled Blessed Hopes written by Leona Josefa Florentino in the year 1880. So first let's discuss the author. She was born on April 19, 1849 and died on October 4, 1884. She was a Filipino poet both in Spanish and Ilocano languages. And she is considered as the mother of women's literature. Florentina married a politician named Elias de los Reyes at the age of 14 and they had five children together. Their son, Isabella de los Reyes, became a Filipino writer, an activist, and a senator. Back in their days, the women are not allowed to study. And due to that reason, the type of education that they were dealing with are to be a spouse, to be mother, or to be a homemaker. She was born in a wealthy family and is able to work her first poem at the at the young age. But due to her gender, she wasn't able able to enter a university. And instead, she was tutored by her mother. Due to the nature of her writings, Florentino was shunned by her husband and son. She lived alone in exile and separately from her family. Then she died at the age of 35. Now let's read the poem entitled Blasted Hopes written by Leona Josefa Florentino. What gladness and what joy are endowed to one who is loved for truly there is one to share all his sufferings and his pains. My fate is dim, my star is so low. Perhaps nothing to it can compare, for truly I do not doubt, for presently I suffer so. For even I, I did love the beauty whom I desired, never do I fully realize that I am worthy of her. Shall I curse the hour when first I saw the light of day? Would it not have been better a thousand times I had died when I was born? Would I want to explain my, but my tongue remains powerless? For now, do I clearly see to be spurned is my lot? But would it be my greatest joy? To know that it is you I love, for to you I vow and a promise I make, it is you alone for whom I would lay my life. And now let us interpret or analyze each stanza of the poem. The first stanza is, what gladness and what joy are endowed to one who is loved, for truly there is one to share all his suffering and his pain. In this stanza, this means that the persona in the poem begins by expressing the delight one must feel when he is given love. Sharing love with someone would also mean sharing each other's pain. The next stanza is my fate is dim, my star so low, perhaps nothing to it can compare. For truly I do not doubt, for presently I suffer so. And the second stanza it means that even if he is, is co constantly suffering, he did not surrender and still endured the pain. Next, the third stanza. For even I did love the beauty whom I desired, 
never do I fully realized that I am worthy of her. Then this stanza turns the turns out the event. It means that even after all those things, he gained nothing and felt unworthy. This stanza shows that the opposite of the idea of being loved. It illustrates how hurtful it is when you don't have someone to dedicate your life with. And then in the fourth stanza, it says that, Shall I curse the hour when first I saw the light of the day? Would it not have been better a thousand times I had died when I was born? In this stanza, or in this line, it relates to the title, As Diminished Hope. It seems as though he is suffering from a heartbreak with no one else to share with. In this line, we can clearly see that the situation is out of control and the despair and rejection and are outside of the range. Next, there is a feeling of resignation in this stanza, with opposes to the delight that was meant to be felt by him because as we have said in the first stanza expressing the delight one must feel when he is given love now he was it was full of despair and rejection in the fourth stanza and then in the next stanza it says that would I want to explain, but my tongue remains powerless. For now do I clearly see to be spurned is my lot. This stanza means that, spite of having this bottled up emotions, he, ch he still chose to be silent. Because he, is, he already realized that this is what it is. And the next, the last stanza, but would it be my greatest joy to know that it is you I love? For to you do I vow and a promise I make. It is you alone for whom I would lay my life. And this stanza, it says that, and yet after all of this, will he is stay, still stay and invests his love, his love towards her. And so, the poem ends with a heart-rending assurance that the persona would love the other person despite the pain that she had caused him. And it still brought him joy to know that he gave her love even though with certainty that it would not be reciprocated. So generally, the theme of the poem is it is revolving on the unrequited love of the man and the potent consequences that arise from it.